I'd like to do is to speak about uh, supply chain and uh, policy. And uh, this is continued with a uh, line of research that I've done now for a while. The basic point is that economics, uh, the way we do it now, is excellent and relevant for the 19th century. When you have a competitive economy, small firms, uh, most very little innovations, and I think that uh, really we need to realize uh, how the real world operates today. Now, I'm not the first one, obviously, that say it. Uh, Schultz uh, basically spoke that the modern world is full of adjustment and the ability to deal with this equilibrium is very important. Uh, Schumpeter uh, emphasized the notion of uh, creative destruction. And uh, if you read Williamson and Coase, they really uh, came with a lot of ideas that uh, similar to what I uh, present here. Now, I, I try to emphasize two things that are very important. First, the importance of innovation, and secondly, the importance of the uh, supply chain. And we basically speak about the two, uh, two set uh, of you know, uh, supply chain that are integrated. Uh, one is uh, uh, that are symbiotic. One is the uh, innovation supply chain and the product supply chain. So to me, the story of uh, modernity is that uh, that you have some that you start with research, research generate knowledge, knowledge may generate innovations, and the innovation may go through the, from the private to the public sector, either through OTT or a lot of time you have companies that basically take. Uh, the, the, take existing knowledge and develop new innovation, but then you need to develop the innovation, commercialize it, and then design a supply chain to, uh, to, 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 to sell it. And uh, this type of, uh, uh, this type of uh, procedure is something that, uh, that, uh, that is very important. So generally, there are two mechanisms of innovation. One is the educational industrial complex where university produce new technologies and it moved to companies through Office of Technology Transfer. And in many cases, professors are important in, the, uh, in this element. And the other is a product design company that generally design new products. For example, there is a company called Idaho that design a, a lot of the product of apples. And uh, there are several other companies. And if you look at Ford and if you look at Edison, they use existing knowledge, and they have the product, and especially Edison, he has a product design company, and when he designed a product, he implemented it. And in our times, that's what Tesla is doing, not, in, not with Twitter. But otherwise, generally, what uh, Tesla is doing is that you take existing knowledge and he utilizes it better. He never used something really new. Now, the, but the thing is that uh, we need to have some sort of theory of uh, innovation so, uh, of innovation and supply chain uh, in economics. And uh, generally, I have a little model here, and then I'll speak about the policy implication. Uh, but generally speaking, uh, when you design a supply chain, first of all, it's a dynamic optimization problem. Uh, and you have to decide about the scale of operation, structure, and the impact of market policies. Now, generally speaking, uh, you rarely will have anyone that will design a firm that will be perfectly competitive. They want to have as, to have as much monopoly power. We want to maximize their uh, profit. And, uh, and it's a dynamic uh, procedure. So generally, people have some sort of prediction of demand in order to design their supply chain. And uh, if you read the uh, paper in uh, PNAS, it really tells the story more or less. Now, uh, so I speak with a very simple two-state supply chain. Someone is producing the feedstock, and then someone is, produ then someone is uh, producing a product. So this is perfect for biofuel. This is also perfect for, for example, a flowers in Kenya, where uh, you have people that, uh, uh, th that you have uh, people that grow the flowers and people that process it. It's true with supermarkets. Supermarket sometimes have generic products, sometimes they buy from others. And if you look at Apple or Amazon, it's the same thing. They have some people that uh, produce the, feed, the feedstock, and then the Apple design it, and then Apple market it. 
So, so if you look at the model of a supply chain, you know, there are some economists who have to have some mathematics, so otherwise people think they're stupid. So, but it really, it doesn't really make a difference. So the objective is the net present value of revenue minus processing cost, generally minus uh, the internal uh, uh, and external cost of production, minus investment. The story is this, you have a new company, uh, you have a company, you have to make an investment in, to build the capital. The capital is really important for processing and also for some uh, internal production. And so you can buy product, you can buy a product from, either you produce your own product, vertically integrated, or you buy it from others. So you have three types of expenditure, uh, invest, uh, expenditure on investment, expenditure on uh, production of the existing product, and uh, expenditure of buying from other. And generally we have a three set of uh, set order, first order conditions. The marginal revenue is equal to marginal processing cost plus marginal uh, cost of uh, in production inside. Marginal revenue is equal to marginal processing cost plus the marginal expenditure of buying from other. So generally speaking, if you buy from other you, you, and you have the same cost structure internally, you buy less from other than internally because when you buy the other, you want to take advantage of or a monopolistic power. And then uh, investment take into account the discount net present value of every dollar invested over time, taking into account that there are depreciation, there are interest rate, and that the, and they take into account the marginal productivity of uh, capital. Okay, so, so generally you have dynamic optimization that uh, you maximize the net present value of revenue minus processing cost of production in-house, expenditure to supply, investment, equation of model of capital growth, and then you know that uh, there are some implications. First, entrepreneur make monopoly and monop uh, uh, monopoly profit. They may diversify between domestic, between in-house and outside production. Generally, if you reduce processing cost and you increase demand, you will increase more. There may be specialization, either vertical integration or completely contracting. Uh, investment uh, in capital may increase if the cost of capital is lower and depreciation is higher. And in order that the model will be more realistic, we need to add credit, uh, uh, risk, international trade, etc. So the key point is this, that when you look at uh, the economy, I think that that market structure and uh, that structure is endogenous. Ma a lot of time, design of supply chain determines the market structure. The assumption that we have given market structure, given market is, is unrealistic. Market structure is changing all the time, and, and it's up to the, to the inter entrepreneur. The market structure may change, uh, uh, it may change based on uh, the product cycle and what's going on. And uh, to some extent, whoever controls the, the innovation controls the market structure, and then <coughs> there is a lot of gaming, so if you have a competitor, the market structure change. The perfect competition is basically the last stage of production, the most inter uh, less, least interesting uh, stage before the product goes out of the market, where you have a lot of producers that produce it, but generally people try to run away from it. So now, there are, so generally there are several types of institutions. You have vertical integration, you have contract farming, you can have a combination called nucleus pl uh, plasma. Now I had the privilege of designing a uh, supply chain and in many cases you have this combination, for example in wine. A winery has a little bit of grapes, so they know how to grow grapes, they can provide advice to other farmers, but then they buy it from others. The same thing with every uh, other, every other company. So let me go uh, further. So one of the big issues that we have to do is, uh, I can generalize it, uh, is, to intro is to recognize that a, a key element in all this stuff is credit. Generally speaking, a, a credit uh, determines how fast uh, you can grow and if you have, and you have different type of credit for different type of activity. So if I look at uh, 
at, at, at different type of activities, they have different type of credit. For example, basic research depends on government and private sector and uh, non-profit uh, support. Development depends on venture capital, self-finance. Upscaling depends on hedge fund and uh, uh, venture capital. Production depends on, on uh, uh, bond and stock. And credit card affect consumer choices. So to some extent, that if you, for example, <coughs> make credit more available, interest rates go down, you have more innovation. If you invest more in R&D, uh, you have more innovation. If you, for example, have uh, more, in, uh, more, 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 uh, more credit for development, you have uh, much more uh, faster growing supply chain. So to some extent, uh, understanding supply chain behavior is really important uh, for, uh, for, for development of policy. So uh, in my department, uh, basically people do economic history and the only thing they know about the environment is uh, carbon taxes. Carbon taxes are important, but all the big things that happen in energy have nothing to do with carbon taxes. They have to do with what I'm speaking now. Tesla, whatever you think about the guy, basically was successful because support for R&D that resulted in the battery and credit to consumer and producers that allow him to build a supply chain. So to some extent, you have to have new industry, you need to have a supply chain. Now you want to develop hydrogen, you have to have a supply chain to pr produce hydrogen and you need a supply chain of car to produce hydrogen. No one will do it because it's called the chicken and egg problem. So you need to have government intervention to some extent to provide the credit to, to these two sets of activities. So to some extent, the first thing that we need to know is that a lot of time in the private sector is under investing in a product because uh, uh, from a social perspective, you need to subsidize. You don't need to subsidize McDonald's because it's, not a, pub it's a private good is equal to the public good. But you need to subsidize someone that provides some hydrogen and you need to provide uh, some credit. This is uh, one thing. Now, uh, so, so, so to the second point uh, is, uh, the second point is if you look at the pandemic, the pandemic is two things that uh, you can, can really show the, the point. On one hand, uh, the government increased supply uh, increased demand by giving subsidies uh, for people. And on the other hand, because the pandemic supply went down, so we have the, the inflation. That again show you that you really need to understand how supply chain operate, and a lot of time you need to develop mechanisms for, resi uh, for resilience. So what is the net, net, uh, the net effect? I think that we really need that they need to develop modeling that incorporate business administration consideration. <coughs> Uh, finance, marketing, strategy, in order to make policy. Policy cannot be based on a model from the 19th century. Secondly, a lot of time there is a role for subsidies if the subsidies basically provide the incentive to go beyond the, the private benefit. Uh, and thirdly, there is an incredible role for the government to initiate uh, R&D and uh, to a lot of time to encourage consumer to move towards products that are, that are desirable in order to build the demand and to allow supply chain of alternative direction to emerge. And I think it has a lot of, uh, now there is one point that I didn't mention here, but it's very important, especially after Lindsay mentioned Europe. The, you have to reduce regulation. The cheap thing to improve uh, product quality is to reduce regulation. I'm all the time speaking about the regulation uh, of biotechnology, and I think that Europe speak about climate change, but they are a disaster for the world because of the way uh, they, they operate with biotechnology. To me, the, if agriculture can contribute to sequestration of carbon and uh, for uh, new energy as long as we take advantage of uh, biotechnology, and the bioeconomy can be a crucial element to deal with climate change. But in order to do it, we have to overcome prejudices and uh, every regulatory system that would allow it. Thank you. Thank you.